All right, last unit. Uh, and this is actually going to be not a testing unit. Uh, you'll see some of this on your final exam, uh, so know that you will see some of this, uh, but it's not actually going to be tested for you guys, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this is stuff that you've actually done in Algebra 1, uh, believe it or not. Uh, linear regression. So we're going to be coming up with something called a line best fit. Uh, so what a line best fit is, is we're given data, and we're just trying to figure out a line that best represents that data. That's all it is. Uh, we have two ways of using line best fits. Uh, one, say we have a set of data, right, random points, and notice as you follow the random points that they're going up. So if they're going up, my line may look something like that that best fits the data. This is called a positive correlation because the slope is positive. The higher the slope, uh, the more that it's going to be slain. Uh, if we have a set of data that has uh, a bunch of points going down, and we have a negative slope that is called a negative correlation. That's really all that those things are. Uh, all right, so they're going to do stuff that really I don't ever use uh, because we have the calculators that are able to determine everything for us these days. Uh, this is kind of old school. But to find the slope, uh, we use this formula. So you'll have to use this formula. I'll show you how to use it in this video as well. Uh, but B, uh, the slope, equals the correlation coefficient, which is what R is. I'll talk to you about that is in a minute, uh, times the standard deviation in the Y over the standard deviation in the X. Every time they are looking for these values, they will tell you. So just make sure that you write this formula down. You will be using it some. All right, so going on to the first one. What is the equation of the line of best fit for the following data around the slope and y-intercept to, th uh, to three decimal places? So I'm gonna show you how to do this in decimals. Uh, so you may want to go ahead and pull up Desmos yourself. Uh, I have it kind of-ish pulled up already. Uh, so what we're going to do, I'm arm out of the graph paper, uh, is we're going to add something new. We're going to add a table because that's what I see here. I'm going to try to come up with a line that best represents it. Uh, take a second to put everything into the table. I'm hitting tab so that it just continues to go to the next thing. All right, so now we have all of our points. Uh, if I move my face out of the way, you can see we have all of the points. Uh, they're all right there. So probably this is going to be a positive correlation going something like that. It's going to represent the uh, lines the best they can. So now I'll go to another equation. I'll click on another equation. And the way this is going to work, notice up here you have x1 and you have y1. Uh, so the way that we're going to do this is called regression, is I'm going to type y1 equals, now remember uh, a linear function is y equals mx plus b. All right, so that's kind of what we're going to use. We're going to use m, which represents our slope. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to use equals. The thing that we need to use for this is called a tilde. Uh, this is right on the top left of your keyboard. Uh, it may also be on here, but I'm not seeing it. Uh, somewhere I would think that they would have it. But look for, look for that symbol. Look for that tilde. Yeah, right there, right there. So that's the tilde. That's the symbol I used. If I hit it, you get the same exact thing. All right, so we're going to use this mx plus b. But notice, again, up there I have x1. So I'm going to do mx1 plus b. So what that does, notice it plots a line. Uh, and it gets as close as we can to all of the points as possible. Uh, this R right here, this is called our correlation coefficient. Uh, essentially, that's just how closely this line comes to representing the data. So uh, a 98% correlation coefficient is pretty good. Uh, anything really below like 95 or 90 is meh, it's okay. So probably you should try another equation to get a little bit closer to uh, 1 as possible. If you're exactly 1, that means that that is perfect with the data. Uh, you have a very good representation of what's going on. Uh, M is our slope. B is our y-intercept. Uh, this residual thing, uh, what the residual is is how closely each data point is to an actual point on the line. So if I hit, uh, let's see what it does when I sit, hit plot. So notice uh, this first residual, uh, this point, it is 
that far, the negative 1.492, below where it actually should be. Uh, this 10 is a little bit above, right? 610 is a little bit above uh, where it should be. Uh, the next one is also a little bit above the line. Uh, the next one is also a little bit above the line. This next one's below the line, so it should have a negative residual. The residual is just how far off the line uh, or the represent representation of the data we are. That's it. All right, so just remember, you have the tilde, and you use y1, x1 to add a table. You have to hit add and a table. Uh, I think we may have another one, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, but that's essentially it. It's pretty easy. Uh, just practice it. Go back and watch this part. Uh, you guys are good. All right. Moving on to the next one. Uh, suppose the line of best fit for some data points has a slope of 2.445. Uh, if the mean of the x-coordinates is this and the mean of the y-coordinates is this, what is the y-intercept of the line? Uh, so, remember, y equals mx plus b. So this is saying, on average, get that out of there, on average, the x-coordinates are... 5.781. On average, the y-coordinates are 11.718. So that's exactly on our line. The average is on the line. The mean of the coordinates is on the line of best fit. So if I know that's on the line, then I can use those as my x and y coordinate. So if y is 11.718, tells me the slope is 2.445 times x, which is 5.781 plus my y-intercept. Uh, so it's just a matter of solving this. So 11.718, so 11.718 minus that 2.445 times 5.781. Okay. So you're just subtracting both of those things to the other side. So our y-intercept is negative 2.417. So B, the y-intercept, negative 2.417. Uh, y intercept. Uh, I don't like that they use b in their equation. This is really our slope. Uh, so really that's the slope, that's the n, the slope that we're going to be using. All right, now I think we're actually going to get to use that formula. So suppose the line of best fit is being found for some data, blah, blah, blah. Our value of 0.553, so I have r equals 0.553. Uh, standard deviation of the x, so s sub x, is 4.771, so 4.771, and the standard deviation of the y is 8.125. Find the slope. So that's where we get to use that equation. So write it down. I don't expect that you memorize it. I don't even have it memorized. I've never used this before this course. This course. I don't use it in my regular algebra 2 course. But Apex is going to ask you, so I want to make sure that you guys know what you're doing. So n equals the residual, so 553, which is a really bad residual. Uh, so S sub Y, so 8.125 over 4.771. Uh, then just type all of that in your calculator. So 0.553 times 8.125 divided by 4.771. So I get M to be 0.94. Two. That's one okay. mistake. Uh, so that's it. That's it. you're just using the equation to find the slope. Uh, all right. Suppose the line of best fit is drawn for some data points. If the mean of the x is six and the mean of the y is negative eighteen, uh, the line must pass through which point? Uh, I mean, again, uh, the line of best fit has to pass through the mean of the x and has to pass through the mean of the y. So it has to pass through six negative eighteen. That's it. All right, line of best fit predicts that when x equals 12, y will equal 22.17, but y actually equals 25. What is the residual in this case? So again, uh, the residuals uh, are how far off the line we are. So it's telling us it should have been 22.17, but it's actually 25. So the 25 is above 22.17. So if we do 25 minus 22.17, that will get us... Uh, 2.83. That is my residual. That's it. If it were below, then it would be a negative value. Uh, so maybe we'll do one right now. Uh, 
line of best fit predicts when x is 10, y is 13.94, but y is actually 12. So in this case, it's below. Get out of there, mouse. What are you doing? Uh, so y is below. So if I do 13.94, uh, uh, minus the 12, I don't know why I drew a line there. That will give me 1.94, the difference. But since it's below, this needs to be a negative residual because we're actually getting something that is below what it's supposed to be. Check it out. When I had a point that was below, just like this point right here, it had a negative residual. When I had a point that was below, it had a negative residual. If it's above the line, the y values are greater than what the line actually is. Those are the ones that had a positive residual. All right, going back to you, we're almost done. Uh, what is the outlier in this set of data? So an outlier uh, is kind of just like the oddball. So if it's linear, it's going to be going by about the same amount. So this one, 5 to 9, looks like that's about 4 above, that's about 5 above, that's about 4 above, that's about 4 above, that's about 9 above. Whoa! 9 above the x value? That's crazy. That's kind of an oddball. So that is called our outlier. It's something that uh, it, it's just like way far off from the actual set of data that we got. So if we have a bunch of points, right, all of our points are kind of hanging out in this area. Uh, and then we have one point like way over there. That point that's just like out in the middle of nowhere, that is called our outlier. All right, that's really all I got for you guys. Uh, please, please, please let me know what questions I got or you got. I don't know what questions I have other than how are you doing? Huh? I'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>